Hey everybody, welcome Hello. back to the Classic of Tea, episode eight. We're back with Sunday Tea Book, another episode. After a little hiatus, I disappeared into the ether for a couple weeks. Uh, I'm not gonna tell you where I was because that may <laughs> or may not be a tea trivia time question coming up. Probably is, that's a little <laughs> hint. So, um, but I disappeared. So welcome back to the Classic of Tea, episode eight. We're into chapter four. Mm -hmm. Um, Talking and, about uh, the tools that we use for brewing, boiling tea in Tang Dynasty. And mm. today is the second part of chapter four. Second part of chapter four. Speaking of brewing and drinking tea, let us know what you're brewing. Mm. We are having a delightful Guizhou green, green tea. tea. I have not had this tea in quite Me some time, too. so I'm pretty jazzed to have it. Let us know what's in your cup, how it tastes, how you're brewing it. Let us know all the gory details. That's why we're here. We love that stuff. Um, you want to show them a little bit? Yeah, let's give them a little, show them a little bit of the live leaf. If you saw the pre-roll, mm. I showed it, but here for is the, the, Instagram. Here's for the Instagram people. I'll tell you Instagram people, you would be wise to move over to YouTube because that is where the uh, tea trivia is going to happen. We're going to sign out with you guys mm. on Instagram shortly, but we're going to stay with the folks on YouTube for right. the whole episode. I'm going to use Gaiwan brew today, but I have to say this tea for me, the favorite way of brewing it is actually in trouble mug or just mm. use a mug. Teapot, that kind of style. Yeah, right? I find uh, in that way, it really highlights and bring out the most of that uh, sweet hor Corn. I almost said hornet. <laughs> Sorry, but I mean honey. <laughs> the hornet comes from our loofah. We have a loofah outside in the garden that's completely covered in hornets. Yeah. But this has that sweet honey corn. A, I find it's quite corn. Corn, yeah, but it's a sweet. Like mm, really very is sweet. that a corn mm. like a sweet? Cornbread sweet, I called it in ah, the intro. Right. I said corn bready sweetness, but mm. I think it sounded like corn ready sweetness. So let me clarify that it's corn bready. Mm like turning cornbread into Ooh. an adjective. It's just, uh, I love that. And with that uh, green tea, a uh, refreshing kind of a Right? Even there, right on the really dry leaf, like we've got a warmed lovely. up gaiwan, just rinsed, you know, gave it a rinse with boiling water, but it's so, so sweet. If you, I often forget this step, so I'm just gonna plug it right now and say, look, if you often forget to smell the dry leaf after you warm up and rinse your gaiwan, try not to, it's really delightful. It really mm. provokes the aroma of the tea and uh, you know, enhance your experience. Mm. Oh, look at Victor is here from Slovakia. I'm not even gonna take a stab at your last name. Oh yes, I am. I love to, to, to try out. <laughs> I don't wanna purposely butcher your last name, but I love to try it. I'm gonna guess it's a uh, Yunaniak. I hope I did a good job, Victor, let me know. Um, so Instagram people, I can see there's a, there's a few of you out there. I can see a few of you out in YouTube land. We're going to have tea trivia coming up later. Let me get my notes so I can uh, keep things moving along in the right order here. <laughs> All right. We're a little um, bit rusty. Yeah, I, I took two weeks off. I forget how to do this, right? So, um, yes. So I want to just tell you that uh, let us know what you're sipping. We're interested in what you're sipping, but we also, in the link down below, I have created a special classic of tea sip along six pack. That's what I'm calling it. It's six teas. It's the next six teas that we're going to be having. So one's from last week, Wui uh, Tsilan. Today, Guizhou Green, that's included. It's six 25 gram bags of tea. If you add up all the prices and do the math, you'll find out that this package is 25% off and you're gonna get one tea from each of the six Chinese tea categories. So it's basically like a mega butterfly if you're familiar with our butterfly product. So check that out, link is down below. Let's dive into a little bit of what is Sunday Tea Book. Instagram will let you guys- You got the name right? The last oh my gosh, I got it exactly <laughs> right. I think probably he's being generous, but thank you, Victor, and thanks for joining us. So what is Sunday Tea Book? Sunday Tea Book is where Jen and I take a book, paper, or article that is full of great information about Chinese tea and its culture and is not available in, in English in the West or is perhaps translated but is a little bit of chunky. There's some maybe misunderstanding there. Mm. And we go over it and kind of uh, unpack it and decode it. So you might think to yourself, oh, that sounds super boring. I might also like to watch paint dry. No, it's not boring. <laughs> the reason we do these translations live is because the amount of context, the amount of information 
that I found I was getting from learning about Chinese tea by asking Jen a million questions as we went over stuff mm. is super valuable. It's so valuable that I think it's interesting to you guys too. Also, it's a really rewarding process to even just work some kinks out throughout yes. the uh, explanation. That's right, and that brings us to the other reason we're live is so that you guys can participate. When I'm choked on what word would fit best, or Jen can't quite figure out how to say it, we can explain it kind of long form, you know, really gory and chunky, and you guys can throw out some suggestions. And we found that to be super interesting for you and for us. We love it. That's why we're back with season two. Uh, we've done three books so far, so uh, check. They're all available in the links down below. Mm. Uh, check those out. So that is what Sunday Tea Book is. That's why we do it, mostly because of you guys, because we love hanging out with you, sipping tea, and talking about all this super nerdy tea stuff. Yeah. Speaking of which, I was gonna say when I smell this tea, it's mm. so different than the how, like when I brew that in a thermos. In the thermos, when I smell it, when I taste it, that sweetness I oh, really right. love. But this one, when I smell it, it has more of seaweed, which I, mm, I never yeah. had yeah, when I, I do thermos brew. It's a lot more umami it's, texture yeah, and yeah, aroma. It's quite different. Like the sweetness that I was getting on the dry leaf, it's no longer the uh, dominant. It was mm. very dominant on the yes. dry leaf, and now yes. the umami is more. Mm. I was wondering if you have the similar experience when it's like Gawan brew vis a vis a travel mug brew. Have you ever had a tea that is was just performs? Yeah, it performs really differently. Mm. I'm curious about oh. that. All right, I'm gonna sign out with the oh, Instagram okay. folks. Uh, did you want to say something to them before we? I'm uh, just gonna say we're doing <laughs> the classic of tea. Oh, which let's, let's, let's you guys can is that. one of the most famous book in the West, talking about tea book, mm. the Chinese mm. tea book especially, but it's an ancient tea book about 1200 years ago. So there is a lot of a gap between us, even the Chinese, vis-a-vis uh, -vis 1200 oh, yeah. years ago, not to mention there's English and Chinese. So, uh, and also there are so many versions of the classic of tea. So we are using uh, mm. Mr. Wu Jianong's book, uh, Cha Jin Ping Shu. So that's a book, that's a book uh, includes a translation from ancient Chinese to modern Chinese and a lot of uh, great commentary uh, for helping people understand the classic tea. And I also add some like, other information that I think it was valuable to share with tea lovers. Um, yeah. Cool. So that is what it's all about. I was for the YouTube folks. I was looking for a picture of Mr. Wu Ju and all. I didn't find <laughs> it, so I shot us back to this view. For those of you on Instagram and don't have a clue what I'm talking about, the production on YouTube is at least slightly better than it is on Instagram, and that's why we're about to sign out. We're gonna have tea trivia, which is an interactive game where you guys can, we just lighten up. We lightly have some fun before we get started. So slide on over to YouTube where we're gonna have tea trivia. We're gonna have a couple little images and stuff splashing on the screen. Uh, hope to see you there, uh, Victor and everybody else out there in Instagram land, Khalid and uh, Divian Christopher. Bye bye. All right. That is. See who is here today? Igor is done. here. Hello. Igor, yes. Hello, Igor. Good to see you back, my friend. Mm. All right. So, oh yeah, I gotta do all of this stuff now. I'm so excited. without without further ado, we're gonna dive in. Okay, I'm gonna reach up and do this, make it a little bit easier, and we're gonna get rolling with. Uh, hmm, where is the button? Here it is. T trivia. Time! Woo! Yay, yay! It's my break time. <laughs> so good to be back. All right, guys, welcome to Tea Trivia Time. This is a fun time where we just have a few little warm-up questions that may or may not be about the topics we're talking about today. Today, I did focus in on a bunch of cool Chapter 4 stuff and the question about where I was over the two-week period that we took off recently. So here we go. Let's get started. Question the first question, this Easter egg can be found on the feng lu. I believe that's the stove, the, the, mm -hmm. the, the stove. So this Easter egg can be found on the feng lu. I'll give you guys a little hint, okay? So we didn't call this out as an Easter egg the first time, but there's, 
there's some inscriptions on the Feng Lu and when you put them together they say something a little different than they do individually. So I decided that's an Easter egg. Let me know if you agree with that. Anyway, here are the choices. Yi Yin Soup, Lu Yu's Tea. Is that the answer? Is that the Easter egg? Is it two? Water on top, wind at the bottom, fire in the middle? Is it three? Peaceful body, five elements, free of disease? Or is it four? Eat grapes, throw out their skins. Hey, hey, it's tea trivia. I could do what I want. Okay. <laughs> All right, guys, so what you're going to do now is you're going to submit your answer simply by hitting the number that you think is right and hitting enter. Just doing that is the uh, safest way to get your answer recorded. And we have one right answer. I cannot see who got the right answer, but way to go whoever got the right answer. Or maybe nobody got an answer in time. Sometimes lag plays in here. Igor took a guess at peaceful, peaceful body, five elements, but the correct answer was yi and soup, Lu Yu's tea. And if you break those into two characters each, there's actually an inscription each over the three legs of the three-legged pot. So kind of an interesting little Easter egg that Lu Yu threw into the teapot, into the stove, sorry, the stove. All right, moving along, the Tong Jia, the Tong Jia, can be, the, oh sorry, this is an English <laughs> word. This is not a Chinese word. The Tong, so Tong, which is Jia, can be made with these materials. Okay, according to the classic of tea, what materials can the tongs, the jia, be made with? Is it stone, rubber, or plastic? Is it two, silver, gold, or iron? Three, porcelain or gra glass? Grass, yes. that would be weird. Three, porcelain or glass, or four, fresh bamboo sticks, or wrought iron, or brass? Which materials can be used to make the tongs? So this is also from chapter four. So if you want to cheat a little bit, you can click the link down below, which will pull up chapter four, which we're still talking about today and have a quick peek and see if you can find the answer in time. I see Igor has submitted his uh, guess of four. a 2 Easy has also gone with four. Way to go. I wanted to encourage everybody to just take a guess. This is not um, a test where you're gonna lose anything. So way to go, Igor and a 2 Easy. You both got that right. It is with fresh bamboo. Uh, recommended because it give a little bamboo aroma to the tea, but Lu Yu is very practical in the classic of tea and he points out that wrought iron or brass are going to last you way longer. And they're also the fresh bamboo is many times not available unless you're in the country. According to him, I would have thought in the Tang Dynasty everything's a country, but remember what we said, the capital was a huge city, one of the hugest in the world at its time. Mm. Alrighty, moving along, Lu Yu recommends a Fu be made from this substance. The Fu is, you're gonna help me out, I'm supposed to remember what these are, <laughs> but the Fu is, is the, the pot. pot, that's right, it's the pot. It should be made from one, silver, two, raw iron, also known as rushed iron, three, porcelain or stone, or four, glass. Lu Yu recommends that it be made from this particular substance. It's either one, silver, two, raw iron, also known as rushed iron, three, porcelain or stone, or four, glass. Shoot your answer down below. Take a guess if you're not sure. It's all for fun. There's going to be a little scoring at the end. Igor has begun the guessing with number three, porcelain or stone. Good guess. Way to go. Everybody throw it out. You've got a few more seconds before the timer runs down and the answers are tabulated. a too easy follows along in Igor's footsteps, also guessing number three. I'm going to get my sound effects ready. Now the corn sweetness is coming out a little more. Good guess, guys. Porcelain or stone um, are possibilities, but Lu Yu recommends raw iron, also known as rushed iron, again for that reason of durability, not too fragile. Uh, glass is not one of the options. He also says silver is a doable, but super expensive, not practical. He chooses raw iron. Mm. It's okay, Igor. It's a good guess, and I'm proud of you for just putting yourself out there and leading the way. All right. Next question. Once Tang Dynasty tea is powdered, it, its, its value is greatly decreased. Answer one. It must be used right away. Number two. Three. It is either boiled or snorted. Or four. <laughs> just don't laugh, don't laugh. <laughs> it is pretty funny. <laughs> or four, it can be stored in a lao, in a luo, luo, luo he with a z for later use. Woo! 
a little bit of uh, Chinese going on there. So once the Tang Dynasty tea is powdered, so if you'll remember their process of drinking the tea was actually, it comes in a cake, they powder that, uh, then they mix it up with some herbs and spices. Maybe when they powder it, I don't know. Then they boil, yeah. boil it, and then they okay, drink boy. it. Soon we will learn how they boil that. Ooh, today, stay tuned. We're going to talk about how they boil it. Not today. Sorry. Oh, not today. <laughs> Next okay. chapter. Well, you're going to have to come back. Igor putting himself out there. Awesome. So once the Tang Dynasty tea is powdered, Igor guess number one. A too easy guess number four, which is correct. It can be stored in a luohe with a zhe, which is basically the spoon for pulling out that powder for later use. Um, great, great work, guys. Way to put yourself out there and take some guesses and have some fun with tea trivia. Now for the question you have all been waiting for the whole time. I don't know why I did that. North County Outdoor Guy guessed four. Way to go, North County Outdoor Guy. Just a little bit late for the computer. The final question you've been waiting for is where the heck was I, was I for the past two weeks? Was I in one, Yukon and Northwest Territories? Was I in two, New Brunswick and Nova Scotia? Was I in three, China? Or was I in four, Australia? Where was I for the past two weeks? So if you follow us on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter, you might know the answer to this. Uh, I did mention it there a couple times, so this is my shameless way to plug our social media outlets. Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, we're available on all of those. Um, if you want to find us on other social media platforms, you know, you won't. Uh, <laughs> you won't, we're not there. No, we hate it. We just do it because it's a, kind of a necessary evil, but check us out on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. <laughs> you won't. And, uh, yeah, where was I? I think I even mentioned it uh, the last week before we signed off for a couple weeks where I was going. So was I in the Yukon and Northwest Territories? That's what Igor is guessing. Two, New Brunswick and Nova Scotia. Three, China or four, Australia. And the correct answer is New Brunswick and Nova Scotia. Uh, my mom lives down there in New Brunswick. I was down there helping her out with some stuff. And I did make it over to Nova Scotia to check out uh, Phil Holtzman's beautiful shop, uh, World... I always get this mixed up with World of Tea. That's not what it's called. It's called the World Tea House. Check it out if you're ever in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Fantastic little shop. Uh, and Phil's a super, super nice guy. So definitely swing in there and have a sip of tea. All right, everybody. Here come the results from the magical computer. And uh, I don't really know what to make of these. It looks like A2Easy got two right and Igor got one right. But I thought Igor had more right. But it doesn't really matter. You're all winners in my book. We had a great time with tea trivia. Uh, I love this way of warming up the Sunday tea book. We will continue doing this. And, uh, but now we will dive in to the classic of tea. I'll just turn the camera over here. And mm. boom, jiggle us back into shape. Here we are. <laughs> oh man, that, that was, was pretty so fun. fun. Yeah, that was a pretty, and I have to say, I'm not usually so intense on um, material focused content, but uh, mm. a full disclosure, I rushed that one out last night, so I'm just basically looking at chapter four and pulling questions out. So many of these, pretty good. it's pretty fun. It is related. Yeah. So, it helped me refresh my memory because. You know, mm. sometimes mm. I got things mixed up too. So, mm. um, just a little bit of recap of chapter four. It's all about the tools we use to make the tea, including, you know, water boilers, mm. kettle, not kettle at the moment, pot, and mm. the tools, the little spoons or uh, storage little box, all kinds of stuff. So, uh, if you're not here, not the previous episode, uh, be sure to check it out. Uh, and today we're just going to continue to talk about uh, the rest of the tools. I'll just interrupt right, uh, right. quickly to, to explain that the link down below that goes to chapter four mm -hmm. actually has the video, the first video from mm -hmm. chapter four. That's the way we're kind of managing it. Every post will be a chapter. If we have to do one video or a bunch of videos to cover that chapter, they'll be found on that page. Mm. Um, and then when this one's done, you'll notice it's not available for a moment. Just give us a little while and it'll come back uh, Monday or Tuesday. Yeah. Um, so before the, in Tang Dynasty, they have the, uh, the way they drink tea is quite different than what we have right mm. now, right? Mm. They, uh, in process and we talk about it, it's actually pressed into little cakes and before they drink it, they roast it and they also powder it. Uh, 
Mm. Here is the. I ing- forgot about the roast. Yeah, they roast to dry it a little bit, and also related to old times the storage uh, condition. And today, it's, it's you cannot compare, right? right yeah. <laughs> and uh, they're mostly in the south, like more humid-ish area mm-hmm. compared to mm-hmm. uh, compared to in the north. Mm-hmm. So roast to roast actually even for today's tea it helps uh, uh, enhance the aroma as well. Mm. Mm-hmm. And so in terms of powder, when we talk about it, maybe because we're more familiar with the Japanese tea and we're thinking, okay, we powder the tea and that would be uh, right. the powder. But it's actually not quite true. But how fine is the powder? How fine mm-hmm. do the Tang Dynasty people uh, powder the tea? Uh, actually, we don't know. They didn't say it. They didn't say it over 80 counts oh. or 100 counts. They use the right. fabric. So uh, the test, oh. the translation of the uh, classic D is on the website. So you can see uh, they use a fabric to sift through. That kind of fabric is they want a fine fabric, but okay. how fine exactly we are not sure. But in the later chapters, when we go there, we will notice it's not a powder like you know, like matcha, mm, like matcha, or mm-hmm. like a, like a starch powder. It's actually more like a fine grit. It, uh, estimate is more similar to uh, tea bag tea. Ah, those kind of little grits. Right, right. Rather than powder, powder. Just to say, um, that. it makes a lot of sense too, because the amount of work would go up quite a bit if you were trying to get some kind of really matcha type powder. You're going to be mm-hmm. grinding that with the mortar and pestle. A lot of time. time, and I feel mm-hmm. like it's not very friendly to boiling, because powder, the real powder to boil, like mm-hmm. put that in the water, is a poof of, like like experience with starch powder. I wouldn't like right. that. So right. maybe that's in, we don't know. Um, and also, uh, well, they, uh, Lu Yu also mentioned that to use a water filter. Uh, it's a filter, but I just want to point out that uh, because uh, when I talk about a water filter, without the context, I right okay. away think about, let's say, Brita, Brita. <laughs> or something like, uh, you know, a, a carbon filter or some other fancy things. Yeah, or like our we have our stream filter we use when yes. we go camping, right? Where yes. we can just filter yes. some uh, outdoor water. And that's for sure not the deal for them. Right. Uh, it's right. not that high end. So the water filter is actually a, a common item for the Buddhist uh, practice at oh. that time in temples and stuff. Uh, as we know, uh, Lu Yu has a pretty close relationship with the Buddhism. So I think he kind of borrowed this concept from uh, the Buddhism to use this kind mm-hmm. of a water filter before uh, you use the water. And what it filters is mostly like a leaves dropping and stuff, a more like a big grid. Or Chunkier big, sediment, right? Yeah, stuff mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. Not as fine as how we nowadays do water filter sure. for taste and stuff. Um, and that practice wasn't fully passed along throughout the history, actually. Oh, it's after him, After him, not mm-hmm. many people talk about a water filter as an important part of a tea water preparation. That's mm-hmm. an interesting comment because um, I don't know about other people, but for me, I tend to think of uh, progress as a, as a constant climb mm. but it, it, the fact is is there you know sometimes there's and, and you know whether or not the filtered right. water is progress per se and it's not really what I mean but you know there tends to be these these things that happen and then they go out of use or, or they're right. even lost right? right but that's interesting that it's not consistently kept from this point forward vis-a-vis tea and mm. water where it actually you know pretty it matters you know yeah for sure and it, it is interesting like I like a Lu Yu is very Famous and really like care about water in terms of tea brewing. Not saying after him people don't care. Just the whole focus of talking about tea is really about tea, tea making, tea growing, tea uh, tasting, and all that mm-hmm. stuff. Mm-hmm. So the in terms of water, there are not many books that follows his lead. He had a shipping, but that's right, pretty right. much it. While in terms of tea books, there are tons of tea books out after him, right. inspired by him. Yeah. It's really interesting the level of detail he went to is, um, it's really unparalleled, um, especially in terms of tasting and getting into sort of uh, 
you know, what we do at Gen T in terms of fine tasting great tea and really diving into the, the, mm. the deeper tasting notes and taking the time to taste. Aspect. I think there's people... Aspect? What do I mean? I mean, yeah. like... <laughs> sorry. I mean, people... Um, how should I say? Like, he, from his book, you can tell he's more of a tea taster. Practice uh, brewing mm. tea, drinking tea, less of a tea maker. Right. Right. Like a, well, less the, of a tea producer. Producer, mm. right. While well, later teas, you have a lot of people who are really emphasized on tea producing. And when you read right. their books right. about... Those, those are their emphasis and they spend a great deal about plucking and making and how do you right. do those things. So there's that. Interesting thing though is I want to say like with tea production, mm -hmm. you know, um, obviously complicated, obviously a large spectrum of how much time and effort you can put into it and the result you get can be quite different. Mm. Tea tasting, I want to just explain if anyone's new to tea out there for tea tasting, it's not as obvious, but it's, to me, it has the same spectrum. It can be something you quickly make and, you know, throw a tea bag in a mug and have a, you know, chug that down and enjoy it. Nothing wrong with that at all. Um, but on the other hand, what I didn't know is you can learn, you can improve as a taster uh, simply by paying attention. And uh, we do, I won't get into it too much more, but we have a great video on it from one of our Sunday tea books from China Tea about the steps of tasting. And I think we have a whole video on it as well that I'm going to mm. put in the link down below. It's not there yet, but I'll put it because for me, it really opened up the door. And why I'm talking about that is when I tasted this tea, now that sweetness is coming back as we yeah, continue to brew it. More. But I had to hold that in my mouth and breathe mm. over it, which is one of the sort of techniques or tricks that we And you will hear us slurp. About. Yeah, and you'll hear us slurp and etc. So. And the interesting thing and how it all ties in is, is it's really interesting to see that Lu Yu really dove into that even 1200 years ago, start to realize the potential of this. The, it, it turns out the reason for this is the complex chemistry of the tea leaf leaves it open to so many results that are arrived at by processing. I'm sure, I'm not sure Lu Yu had that whole chemistry thing figured out, but he did notice that the potential and, and you know, that processing mattered. So super interesting. Sorry, I didn't mean to go off oh, topic. Oh, that's perfect. But, yeah. No, I think that's perfect. And that's why he paid attention to water, right? Right, and that's why mm. water is also a really important aspect. Mm. In fact, I was traveling recently and couldn't help but notice I had to adjust my brewing technique and whatnot. Because the water is different. The water was different. So I had to find little tricks. I didn't go with filtering, but I did have to kind of say, okay, a little more leaf, a little less leaf, whatever. I had to dial, redial in. It was a minor tweak, but yeah, really interesting. Mm. So the later part of this chapter, he talked about something I think a lot of people are interested in is mm. tea wares, like more common tea wear talking about a teacup. Okay, so in his teacup and what kind of a kiln, what kind of a colored teacup is the best for tea? Mm -hmm. In his opinion, uh, the green, now we call it celadon. Celadon. celadon green, right? Yeah, that green mm. teacup is the best because the tea liquor at that time, we don't have that. I was looking around for anything <laughs> roughly celadon color in our vicinity that I could reach for. You know it, you're all tea lovers. You probably saw that enough. Nope. <laughs> Um, because of the tea liquor at that time is reddish. So if it's in a white teacup, it looks red, which is the color of the tea liquor. Then if it's in a yellow colored teacup, uh, that will look a little bit purple hue. And if it's in a, like a brown or dark reddish um, mm. uh, teacup, the tea liquor will look more dark or even a little bit black tone. Mm. So he really loves that um, light green, a little bit the bluish green, greenish blue, that uh, mm. gentle uh, color to emphasize and to bring the tea color a little bit to the green tone for mm. uh, which he thinks is more appealing. For tea colors. Right, it's the aesthetic of the whole experience yeah. matches the experience or the flavor or whatever. Mm. And if we expand that to see the whole range, whole range, the whole history of how 
the desired color for teacup, it also changes as the peop- as the tea making process change right. and how people enjoy tea change. So in Song Dynasty, which people do a lot of uh, pottering and whisk, and they love white tea, not the white tea that we're talking about today. Is that teas, the foam and stuff is white. The white, the better. Right. Red, right. That's why you will see the most desired teacup in Song Dynasty. There are all those dark colors, ah. super dark color, because of that accentuate that highlights right, that right. white foam. Right. And uh, later on in Ming Dynasty, we start to drink a uh, similar ish to today's way, which is a tea uh, uh, brew, just like today's brew, mm. basically with infuse. infuse mm. Yeah, infuse and not to add other stuff. Though people still add milk and uh, sugar today, but uh, in China, mostly we. Uh, Pretty much straight up. Yeah, unless it's bubble tea. <laughs> unless it's bubble tea, yeah, yeah, right. yeah. So that in that case is from Ming Dynasty, people more like a white teacup, which is the opposite of what Lu Yu said, right? He doesn't want white at all. So right, later on, right. we want white because white would highlight the color of the liquor, which right now is green, yellowish too, mostly. Right. Right. And nowadays, right, it actually lets you see the we've got a bunch of categories, each with a different, well, each tea kind of has its target liquor color. So it lets you look at that. And still, for people who just get into tea, we always suggest a a white porcelain because Mm. when you get to know it, you got to pay attention and to those details, different hues of a tea liquor and why is the best to see it. Right, right. Um, Yeah, in terms of hitting your brew, right, with... Yeah. And in terms of uh, talking about teaware, a lot of times we talk about tea cup, tea uh, gaiwan, teapot. Um, I want to yeah. ask folks if, they, okay. if anybody out there has a, tea, uh, a teaware addiction, because that's a real thing. It can be uh, you know, pretty fun, but also a little bit expensive. So let us know if you have a teaware addiction and, uh, <laughs> and what your favorite piece is or something like that. Yeah, it would be hard to say no. Like, Right, you know. teapots especially. I think those get people, but teacups are super cute too. Mm. Guilty. Oh, oh. Speaking of teacups, I want to show. I just want to show these off. Right. I picked these cups today on purpose because uh, these were. Uh, he painted those. Yeah, these are hand painted by me, so they're really, really a little bit goofy, or maybe a lot goofy. They, you can guess when I painted them. Tea trip 2019. We need a vote, okay? Is this a bear or a dog? Well, they don't know. They weren't there. It's yeah, the dog from Wuyi. Don't oh, you sorry. think that look like a bear though? Let's show them the Wuyi mountains though. Oh, they, this way, this way. We're going to drop something that's going to be hilarious. So there's yeah. the Wuyi mountains by That's me. pretty good, so, even with the wispy clouds there, right? I shouldn't have showed them this, but this is pretty, anyway. it's not pretty good. <laughs> but, they, but we were there and, and the guy said, hey, you guys want to paint some teaware? And I couldn't understand because they were speaking Chinese, Mandarin, and those two said, yeah, he wants to do that. <laughs> So I'm sitting there with a bunch of prof- my, my professionals. My mom and I are really, really bad at the drawing. Yeah, yeah, so am I, obviously, right? But uh, anyway, so they thrust me into this, and I'm in this room with these actual, these people are amazing. Like one of the guys painted this super beautiful scene, and I'm like kind of, oh my gosh. And it doesn't look like this when you paint it. It's, it's light pink. It's just a black. Yeah. Everything's black. Oh, great, great. You're right. It was oh, great. great. Like it shades from white to black, a different gray shades. Depends on how hard you press, right? Yeah. And how much, you know, juice, how much yeah. paint or... Yeah. Or, basically how much paint you put in. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, really fun experience. And although I was quite nervous and, uh, you know, did a mediocre a job. Result. It was fun. It was fun. Yeah. So just want to talk, quickly mention something, uh, which is interesting. I have been doing a, a few like little short videos answering certain questions that mm. I get and stuff. If you like, you can check on our previous videos. And if you like those and if you have any questions and stuff, uh, be sure to leave a comment because those are my inspirations for my short, short topics. Mm. And uh, which, uh, why I mention that is uh, coming up, what I'd like to talk some. Uh, topics about uh, tea words like um, people asking about eating teapot. It's a little bit overdue, but it's coming. Uh, anyway, so here just a quickly mention about uh, tea word design in terms of uh, 
Lu Yu, what he did, mm. uh, you will notice he mentioned a lot about the material, right? What kind of a paper we use to wrap paper, shantenzhi. What kind of a tall or little fresh bamboo is the best, right? Water filter of the raw brass or raw copper ideal for uh, doing. Like a lot of them and different wood, you know, orange wood for uh, the not sifting the cutting one. How do I say that? The which part? Powdering. Oh, the mortar and pestle. Yeah, part, mortar and pestle. Yeah. yeah. So uh, almost every item he would tell you what material is best, and sometimes with some reasoning. So it really, it is the overhead rule in terms of tea wear is the material really matters a lot in terms of mm. impact on tea. Mm. So ideally, we want some uh, tea wear that helps enhance enhance the taste, the smell, the aroma, the, the look of the tea. Well, the bottom line is uh, something that doesn't harm, affect the quality of the tea. Right. You know, right. so right. you don't want something with a strong smell to use mm -hmm. it, like mm -hmm. certain wood can be really aromatic. Right. You don't want to uh, use that as a tea is uh, self very absorbent. Right. of aromas and um, so in terms of tea wear in turn uh, choosing and stuff the most important thing that affects our how will we take our taste experience is the material right the major line is porous and non-porous mm. of how that works of course we can still uh, de divide all this two big categories into finer lines like right. porous you have yixing you have jian uh, shui you have tons of uh, different uh, thing but that's very important and if you have to count what's the second important thing in terms of tea wear that will be shape because mm. uh, I notice a lot of people when we talk about oh teapot brewing is so much different than gaiwan brewing the result of the same tea is so different material for sure but the, the the shape is greatly uh, affected. Right. The brewing time, the subtle brewing time difference, yeah. the subtle temperature here, the shape is really different. Mm. Um, so. Yeah, you've got a great video yeah. about that. How to choose and use yeasting teapot, which mm. even practical things like make sure your leaf is going to fit in the opening, which is. Um, obviously painfully obvious when you're trying to stuff the tea in the pot but when you're in the shop looking at a super cute teapot you might forget that you want that pot for yan cha which is a big long straight leaf that you don't want to break into pieces mm. and it's got a little mini opening like this and it's not going to fly it's just mm. not going to fit so um that's a great video what else did i want to say that was really interesting like um so the two main things I want to recap, because that's really handy, right? Porous and non-porous because of the impact on the Material liquor, sort of the, matters. you know, and the, the, the non-porous being the one that sort of can do just about anything. You just need to clean it. Um, and then um, uh, shape, shape, yes, shape, because that one's a lot more subtle. Like the porous and non-porous is really obvious, but the shape is really interesting for teapot, for gaiwan. Um, even for teacup, I think, is kind of interesting, right? You mm -hmm. have some really open cups. Mm -hmm. North Country Outdoor Guys. I'm just starting, so no addiction No yet, addiction to tea wear yet. Sure it's coming. Yes, it's coming. Hopefully not. <laughs> okay, try and control well, yourself. I think it's a fun part. It is super you know, fun. It's it is like super you, fun. For girls, like you choose your clothes or choose your lipsticks according to today's weather or what you feel. Mm -hmm. and and when we choose tea, it's the same, right? I just want, uh, you know, today I want rock tea with that uh, taller cup. I yeah, no, all, I, by all means, like weather definitely affects the, the tea selection from a day-to-day -day basis. If it's stormy or whatever, you want those warming, usually brown liquor I like on those yeah. days. And then yeah. on a sunny day, I might go for a green tea or yeah. a white tea. I just want everything matches up. All right, so. <laughs> tea Barbie. <laughs> T Barbie. Oh. <laughs> All right, guys. So I think that wraps up today's episode and I think that wraps up chapter four. Yes. So be sure to tune in next week for, uh, for chapter five of the classic of tea. 
Um, mm. well, we might be off again. Oh, you're right. Good point. We are hitting the road again. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad we got to. I just uh, solve that. No, great next, point. Next, uh, next chapter is chapter five about boiling, which is really fun. Yeah, how to boil the tea because they're actually boiling the tea, not just the water. So we won't be back next Sunday, but we will be back with chapter five. So um, sometime. The link here, if you're wondering <laughs> what this Discord thing is all about, if you're new to it, there's a link in the description down below. You can join our Discord channel. You can stay in touch with us while we travel. We'll be on there posting pictures and doing, letting you know what we're up to. Maybe posting you some of the teas we're brewing while we're out uh, on the road. We're doing a bit of uh, a bit of, a bit of we're going to be doing some fun stuff. Um, so check out Discord. Uh, the 2019 Cups, I wanted to r remind you guys that that was our, our last tea trip. There is an episode of Cha Ren related to that tea trip. So the link uh, is on our website as well to find Cha Ren, a great uh, source of information about Chinese tea there as well. And uh, if you like the video, please do hit that thumbs up button. It sure helps us and click the subscribe so you'll know when we go live. Um, North County Outdoor Guy, I'm glad you're enjoying this, this series. Um, thank you for joining us. Yeah, thanks for joining us. All the past series are available on our website too. Um, if you're new to this, I strongly recommend uh, China Tea. It's a fantastic book for beginners and experts alike just to remind, just some great tips about how to enjoy uh, Chinese tea. So we will be back with chapter five in a couple weeks probably in a couple weeks, at least at most a couple weeks. <laughs> and uh, I want to just, the final thing I want to do is thank you guys for joining us. This yeah. is what Sunday Tea Book is all about. It's about getting together and going over this stuff uh, together in a live setting. I think it's super fun and, uh, and thanks for joining us. Yeah. Thank you. It has been really fun and I look forward to chapter five. And until next time, keep steeping. Keep steeping. Keep steeping.